Hi everybody. Here I have my Victorine 700 uh, survey meter, Geiger counter. And the problem I started having with it is when I turn it on, it starts making a medium to high frequency buzzing noise and the meter starts reading full scale. I'll see if we can hear it in the video here. So hopefully you might have been able to hear that. You can see the meter starts creeping up um, relatively quickly. So these aren't that complicated. They use a switching flyback circuit to generate approximately, well, nominally 900 volts, but it's probably somewhere closer to about like 960. It is hard to measure because it's an incredibly high output impedance, so you can't just put a typical multimeter up to it and measure the voltage. The multimeter will suck too much current off the circuit and read a falsely low voltage. But even though it's a simple circuit, it's also prone to failure over time, and part of the reason for that is there's really two items. Item one is this diode you can see right here. That is a selenium-based high-voltage switching diode, circa like the 1960s. Any modern silicon 1 to 2 kilovolt fast switching diode can, can be used to replace that. It's going to be more reliable. Item number two, it's a little hard to see. We'll see it when we open it up more. But uh, it's a glass tube called a Coronatron. And essentially, it's an equivalent to a modern-day Zener. It might actually have been more accurate than a Zener at the time of manufacturing. But they put radium inside of this, so a radioactive isotope, to help encourage a specific spark gap. And radium has a half-life of 22 years. So at this point, if this was made in the 1960s, it's 2021 20, now. A lot of that radioactive element has decayed. And that regulation system is not going to work as it appropriately should. Another, There's a lot of other common things. If you read on the internet, uh, there's a lot of forms, bad solder joints, etc., etc. I'm hoping I don't have to get that far into it. So I found on eBay, when I was actually browsing, there's a company, uh, Geo Electronics, that sells small upgrade kits. Essentially, it has a modern diode. It has a what I'm hoping to be a acceptable replacement for the Corontron. Typically, you end up stacking Zener diodes together to get about 920 volts. This one, when I looked up these part numbers, it looks like it might be a little below that, but we'll see how it works out. Worst comes to worst, I have to add one more Zener diode to that stack. I already had started taking this thing apart, uh, so it sped it up a little bit here. Um, I'm just gonna take the rest of it apart here. So ideally, we need to get this inner circuit board off. Now that that's taken apart, we want to be careful with the wires. These are solid core wires, so they are going to be prone to breaking relatively easily. You can see a lot of this old flux that's still on the board here. So we need this to be loose enough to pull it away. And I'm looking at what is holding this in place here. Ah. So in order to pull the circuit board away, we need to remove the screw from this uh, handle inset here. And with that off, we should be able to push the circuit board away. Obviously, there are wires that are permanently attached, so we do need to use caution here. I might have to remove these end elements going to the, uh, the readout gauge here, just so I have a little bit of extra slack.
All right, here we have the circuit board exposed. So you can see that is the Corotron right here. It's actually made by Victorine, it looks like. Made in the USA. And uh, the diode that we're gonna replace is right next to it there. Now, in order to get this out, I'm debating if I have to disassemble this any further. I actually don't think so. I think I might be able to do it just as it is here, which will work out well, because I don't want to remove any more of this than I really have to. Especially this speaker wire here is not something we can very easily loosen up. So I think I'm going to bring it over to my soldering station and we're going to make the replacement of those components with the spares here. So we have a high voltage diode, which I'm also going to put a little bit of sh heat shrink on the leads just because it is approximately a thousand volts. We don't want any arc over. And this is supposedly the replacement for the Corotron. We'll see how that works out. All right, we're back. I have removed the existing uh, selenium switching diode. And we've also pulled out the uh, Victorine made in Cleveland, Ohio, uh, Corotron. In case anyone's interested exactly what that looks like. Instead, they've been replaced. Uh, this is hard to do. I don't want to break any wires, but they've been replaced. You can kind of see it in there, the PCB board, and then right past my thumb, just a diode. Now let's see if we can get this back together without ruining any of these solid wires. trying to make sure that everything is located in a way that there's no wires touching any high voltage equipment etc that looks pretty good I'm just gonna put uh, two screws kind of in each one of these for now in case uh, in case I have to take this thing back apart I also should remove the Geiger tube and measure the voltage Now, I saw a trick that someone to measure the voltage, since you can't do it normally with a uh, voltage uh, multimeter, they actually use a multimeter on micro amp measurement range with a giga ohm resistor. I guess for those of you that have never seen, here's your Geiger counter. Well, here's your Geiger tube right here. I'm assuming that this is not damaged. And uh, these are keyed, so you don't have to be terribly concerned about them, uh, you know, not going in the correct polarity. That's the socket. So I'm going to grab a voltage meter and see if I can find a high impedance resistor. I don't know if I have giga ohm, but we'll find out. All right. Unfortunately, my phone alerted me that I ran out of space during the last video. So I'm not sure where we left off. But I put the batteries in, and uh, when I turn it on, I get a mild buzzing, 
Not in a bad way, but if you listen really close with your ear next to the unit, you can hear uh, the switching power supply. And to me, it sounds like the hum is that it's switching. So I'm gonna finish tightening up this. I forgot there's a second set screw on the uh, dial here. While I'm doing that, let me just check these three. Now, the back of the unit has a radioactive check source on it. It's uh, depleted uranium, I believe, although it depends where you look, and frankly, it probably depends on the serial number of manufacturer for what they happen to have laying around that would work as a check source. So if I open up the beta window, I'm expecting to get, ooh, That's not a good sign. It's a whole lot of nothing. That's a whole lot of nothing. All right, so after a bit of troubleshooting, I will be putting this thing back together. As it turns out, I soldered the Zener regulating string in backwards. So what that was doing is it was basically just shorting the supply to ground. You probably can kind of see it like this. Um, so that is my Zener, Zener uh, diode stack in there. And the new diode, like what we just said. I ended up taking this whole thing apart again. I was checking my, my uh, Geiger tube here. Uh, I don't have a giga ohm resistor to use a voltmeter to check, but I did realize I have a 100x oscilloscope probe that I was able to check the voltage against. And I can show you that here. Let me uh, reposition the video. All right, here we go. I have adjusted the camera so we can see the oscilloscope. If we look in the rear of the system here, but my lighting's not great, I apologize. Pin two on the transformer is ground. Pin one is the high voltage output of the flyback, and then it goes through this regulating, this uh, rectifying diode. So we can look at the raw output if we go on the output side of that diode to ground. So I'm going to attach a 100x probe that's good for 2k kilovolts DC which is more than adequate for doing what we're doing here so I'm gonna stick it onto the side of that diode then if we turn it on I should expect to see a rough pulsing so now this is not the r voltage going directly out to the Geiger tube this is a relatively rough voltage it gets regulated after this fact but here we can see we are on 200 volts per division and so two four six eight we're approximately centered around a thousand volts which is about what we would expect and that pulsed voltage is the discharge output now new capacitors possibly could smooth that voltage out a little bit but if you look at the circuit diagram here and actually we might be able to do it just from this box you can also find it out online um let's see if we can get this into the frame yes we can so after it comes out of this rectification diode it goes through a one mega ohm uh basically an rc low pass filter and this is the old uh chrono tube which is now replaced with diode uh, Zener regulators. So really this RC is a smoothing filter that gives us a nice gentle voltage. So if we clip on to the output of that resistor, which is you actually, you can't really see it. It's just in back of this diode leg here. Actually, let me try turning on the uh, lighting. Oh. Apparently I can't turn on the light while the video is running. If I crank this up just for one sec, you can kind of see it back there. 
right there. Let me uh, crank that back down. So now if we turn on this system and look at the oscilloscope, we should see a much smoother, approximately 920 volt waveform based on the measurement. And we can actually even look at the uh, ratio here if we AC couple it. Uh, this is something I have not done in a while. Let's uh, AC couple it and then let's set it to approximately 10 volt peak to peak. So it's not the most regulated thing in the world, um, but it's good enough that the pulse detection circuit does not sense this garbage. And it uh, looks like we're reading about 20 volts peak to peak, and that's on approximately a 920 volt output. It's adequate enough for this type of a meter and this type of a circuit. So there we go. We tested it. We verified it's working. And uh, now we can finish putting it back together. So there we go. Units back together. And uh, we turn it on on this check source and I would expect it to uh, be approximately uh, 0.15 millirem per hour. So everything's good. It's pretty straightforward, the repairs. And uh, it's as easy as just removing these two components and putting them back in. Hopefully this helps someone out. And uh, if not, good luck. Thanks guys.